chart of accounts. If you open a book, you'll find the table of contents at the beginning of the book. The same thing with the ledger. You'll find a list of all the accounts that the business uses at the beginning as well. This list is called the chart of accounts. The chart of accounts usually include the name of the account and a distinct number associated with that account. This will be illustrated later. It lists all the accounts that the business utilizes. The accounts are classified at least into five main groups. Assets, liabilities, shareholders' equity, revenues, and expenses. Then, they are categorized into subgroups. For example, assets are categorized into current assets and long-term assets. So also the liabilities. As mentioned earlier, each account has a number associated with it, which is also called as the accounting code. The numerical code usually has a certain logic associated with it. Although companies are at liberty to choose a logic that is most suitable for them, many companies would use the following coding logic. The first number in the code usually denotes for the account class. For example, assets accounts will start with the number 1. Liabilities start with the number 2. Shareholders' equity starts with the number 3. Revenues start with the number 4 and expenses start with the number five. Some companies would classify expenses into categories and would start those categories with other numbers. For example, a company could start an operating expense account with the number five and accounts falling under other expenses start with the number six. Companies can add also more categories in expenses, putting the number seven, eight, or nine. Now let's take a closer look on how the account subclasses are coded. If we had a look on assets, it is subclassified into current assets and long-term assets. Current assets are assets, so they start by the number one. Then they are the first category in the assets. So we're going to add to them another one. So a current asset account would start with one, one. Long-term assets are assets, so they start with the number one but they are the second category in assets, so we add the number two. So a long-term asset account will start with one, two. The same thing applies to liabilities, shareholders' equity, revenues, and expenses. Now let's drill down to the account level. If we took the cash account, for example, it falls in the assets category, so it starts with one. The current assets subcategory starts with one as well then cash could take the code of one as well. So it would be one, one, one. And then we put zero, zero. If we want to specify a bank account, say TD current account, and within the cash account, we could add another one to be one, 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 zero, one. The last two digits, zero, one, allows us to add up to 99 cash or bank accounts from 11101 to 11199. If we took equipment as another example, equipment falls in the asset category, so it will start with 1. And since it falls in the long term asset subcategory, so it will take 2. So it is 1, 2. Then the equipment could be the first account in this category. So it would take 1. So it would take the code of one, two, one, then we're going to add zero, zero. Then we can add 99 types of equipment from one, two, one, zero, one, to one, two, one, 99. The same thing applies to liabilities. If we took accounts payable as an example, it will start with two, as it is a liability account. Since it falls in the current liabilities subcategory, it will take one, so it will start with two, one. Then the accounts payable is the first main account in the current liabilities, so it will take another one. So it would be two, one, one, and then we're going to add zero, zero. 
as we have two digits after the 211, we could add up to 99 accounts payable subaccounts. So for accounts payable X, it would be 21101. For accounts payable 2, it would be 21102, etc. The same thing applies to long term liabilities. It will start with 2 for liabilities and another 2 for long term liabilities. Then let's say notes payable is the first account, so it will take 1 to be 2, 2, 1. Then we're going to add 0, 0. Then we can add 99 notes payable accounts. If we need more, we can add another digit to the right so that we can add up to 999 notes payable accounts. The same thing applies for the remaining categories.